Good evening, everybody. I uh, trust that you're well in this uh, very cold week. I'm uh, looking forward to see you face to face uh, next Friday evening uh, at our venue in 32 Horace Street. Um, please feel free to um, look at our website, bcsydney.com. There is an inordinate amount of information and videos. Um, and we would love you not just to listen yourself, but to forward them to your friends. Also, be aware that we have on Wednesday evenings a Zoom meeting. Please make contact with myself or Paul if you'd like to join the prayer meeting. It starts at 7.30. And following the streaming uh, produ production uh, on Friday evening, there is also a short Q&A on Zoom. We have been asked by the landlord and we agree to uh, wear face masks at next week's meeting. But looking forward to see you. There was a large number of people there uh, last Friday and it would be great to, to see you all again. Um, Joel, would you please light the candles? Shalom, everybody. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Hanu Madlikim Nerot Shal Shabbat. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Son Shalom, Or HaOlam. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe. We light these Shabbat lights in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Prince of Peace, Light of the World. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father. Bless us with your presence, enlighten our eyes with your light and your truth, just as we light these Shabbat candles before you, and so make the spirit of trust and love dwell in our homes and in community. We pray, we praise you for the gift of your Son, Yeshua, who has come to bless the whole world and bring light to the nations. Amen. Amen. I trust that you have some wine or some grape juice. Uh, and that you will say the short kiddush with us. Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Urei Pri Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Please also say with us, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotze Lechem Men Haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Over to you, Paul and the musicians. Uh, looking forward to tonight's trust. And we will sing a medieval Jewish prayer, Adon Alam, Lord of the Universe. Adon Olam 
אשר מלך, בטרם כל יציר נברא, לעת נסע לחפץ הכל, לזן הלב שמו נקרא, ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא, והוא היה והוא עובד, והוא יהיה בתדרה, ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא, והוא היה והוא עובד, בתקרה, והוא היה והוא עובד, בתקרה, והוא היה והוא עובד, בתקרה. Eternal One, who reigns supreme before creating anything, when all creation serves your will, then truly your name will be King. And God is one alone unique for all the life, the only root with no beginning and no end. God's mighty rule is absolute. Yeshua's my redeeming God, my rope when in my grief I fall, my banner and my refuge keep, who answers every time I call. To God I give my soul and trust whenever day and night appear. And when my soul still leave this earth, God will be with me, I'll not fear. When all shall end, the God's reign shall still extend in endless story. God was, God is, and God will be in everlasting glory. God is one and long unique for all the life, the only root with no beginning and no end. God's mighty rule is absolute. Yeshua's my redeeming God, my rock when in my grief I fall, my banner and my refuge key, who answers every time I call. To God I give my soul in trust whenever day and night appear. And when my soul still leave this earth, God will be with me. I'll not fear. Shimon <laughs> אדון עולם אשר מלאך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נסע בחפץ הכל אז אין מלאך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עומד והוא יחיה בתקרה ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עומד בתפארה והוא היה והוא עומד Blessed be your holy name, our Lord of the universe, in Yeshua's name, Amen. Shabbat Shalom friends, it is good to be with you. Before I start, let me just pray. Uh, it's been a busy week, and I'm sure it has been for you too, that we just focus our attention back on the Lord and uh, what He's telling us today. So Father, give us grace and calm our spirits. Help us to come into your realm of thinking. Help us to put aside our logic and thinking and focus on your sure the Messiah. Lead us by your spirit in all truth. Mashem Yeshua. Amen. 
I've been talking about the things that we believe and today I want to continue that theme and uh, within that there was a sub theme that I started to address which was the messiahship of Yeshua and I said Yeshua is the messiah based on the prophecy that was given to Moses in Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 to 18 that he would be a prophet like Moses and last time I spelled out that it's not just that he's a prophet but he's also a priest he's also a judge he's also a king and that kingship is the one that I want to address today because it is probably the most ignored amongst believers today when I look at the worldwide body of Messiah uh, they sometimes talk and, and we often talk but we, we talk about oh we agree on most things but on this this one thing uh, that you believe that messianic kingdom thing that's just based on revelation 20 and it really is a side issue or a secondary issue or it's not essential but the kingdom of god is essential the kingship of yeshua is essential you see if he isn't a prophet who came and declared truth to Israel and if he didn't prophesy if he's not our high priest in heaven making intercession for us then he's not the Messiah if he isn't one of those two and that's the same with the kingship if he isn't the king he's not the Messiah we cannot pick and choose what we want the kingship of God is crucial and he will come and this is a future office but when he comes he won't just reign over israel but he will reign over all the earth and sadly uh, the majority of the body of messiah is now denying this listen to these words that the angel spoke so this is uh, the an angel of the lord who spoke and so there is no miscommunication there's no nothing happening here and he spoke to Miriam uh, his mother or Mary and he said this Luke chapter 1 verses 30 to 33 the angel said to her don't be afraid Mary for you found faithful with God and behold you will conceive in your thing uh, in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Yeshua He'll be great and he'll be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end the throne of his father David well it's a reference to King David that's clear there's, there's no mistaking about that but the throne of David wasn't in heaven it wasn't in my heart wherever that is I don't know I'm not a medical person but it isn't a pie in the sky and it isn't some make-believe place King David ruled over a kingdom the kingdom of David reigned over the house of Jacob over all the house of Jacob and so the throne of Yeshua will be given to him by God the Father it'll be like the throne of his father David and he will reign over the Jewish people not only that it says forever his kingdom will have no end this is an ongoing kingdom throne that is to be established if Yeshua isn't the prophet he's not the Messiah if Yeshua <coughs> sorry if Yeshua isn't our high priest then he's not the Messiah if Yeshua will not be king and as declared he by the angel sitting on the throne of his father David reigning over the house of Israel then he is not king he's not the Messiah it's crucial for us to get that because I find it so sad that that the kingdom theme in scripture is huge it takes up one of the most important places in uh, Bible prophecy it is referenced in in 
almost every book and, and most of the major prophets and most of the minor prophets all of the major prophets and most of the minor prophets deal with it it's referenced here in the gospels and it's referenced in genesis it's referenced in revelation to ignore this is incredible and to say that it's not a key thing shame on us not only that think about what Yeshua said in uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 uh, where he taught a prayer to the disciples and he said pray in this way he didn't say pray this prayer over and over and over again but pray in this manner so that you can think about all of these phrases and what did he say Matthew 6 9 to 10 our father who is in heaven sanctified be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven let me reword that slightly because he said pray in this manner or in this way our father is in heaven sanctified be your uh, great name your kingdom come on earth when your will will be done here as it is in heaven in other words there is a time coming that we need to pray for for the kingdom of God to come upon earth and that his will will be done here as it is in heaven and that's clearly not today but that kingdom will come while it goes beyond uh, today to talk about all of the the things that I want to talk about I, I want to make a reference so that, that you can see where I'm going to slot this in. When will this kingdom come? Well, when the time of the Gentiles are concluded. The times of the Gentiles, Luke 21, uh, verse 24, is referencing Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Uh, it will happen. But the kingdoms of the Gentiles need to be in submission. Now, Let's look at some verses from Scripture and see if we can talk about the kingdom uh, from beginning to end. Uh, I realized uh, I have more references than I can poke a stick at. It, it is beyond me to deal with all of the references, but I will I will put them up on this side, I think. But we'll see. So, one of the most important passages, Psalm 2. In Psalm 2 we see that he's talking about the messianic king and the kingdom and he says why are the nations in uproar and the peoples devising a vain thing the kings of the earth take their stand together and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed on the one hand this is a general reference what is it that they want to do they want to break the laws and they want to break the covenants they want to break tear their feathers apart and cast away their cords but he who sits in the heaven smirks he laughs he this is a general quiet reference to laughing after that the lord will scoff at them saying ha, what are you doing then he will speak to them in his anger and terrified him in his fury saying note that progression first of all he's he's he is smirking he's laughing then he is scoffing then he is speaking to them in his anger and then he will terrify them there is that that incredible progression here that we see and this is what he wants to tell them but as for me I've installed my king upon Zion my holy mountain Mount Zion is a, is, is a mountain in Jerusalem upon which no Jewish king was ever anointed as king and so this hasn't happened yet this is still to happen not only that note the language I have installed God is speaking my king in other words this is God's anointed king the kingship of Messiah is not just something we can go well you know uh, it's a minor issue 
God made it a major issue and he says this is where it will happen then he says about this king surely I'll tell you the decree of the Lord he said to me you are my son so there's no doubt about who he's talking about he's talking about Messiah the son of God today I've begotten you and what is he given as his possession is given the ends of the earth but that was never promised to David or to Solomon or any of the Jewish kings that followed so clearly this king will get more than all of they did all of the earth to the very ends of it and how will he reign with a rod of iron you shall break them with a rod of iron who's the, the them here they're the nations particularly the kings of the earth who took their stand together and who went against the Lord and he will break them like earthenware now therefore O kings be wise show discernment take warning judges of the earth worship the Lord with reference rejoice with trembling do homage or kiss the son so that he may not become angry and you perish in the way this is a messianic passage that tells us that the kingdom is coming and when it will be established it'll be occupied by the king who is God's son that's the Messiah there's no doubt about that and he will reign with a rod of iron what we need to do is be worshipful of him honor him kiss him in some translation to uh, how much impurity to him why because the day will come when his wrath will be kindled how blessed are all who take refuge in him so we have a choice we can either take our stand with the kings and the judges or we can seek refuge in him well that's redemption language and so we see that the kingship is about redemption it is connected and we come together to worship do homage to the king and give reference to him but this psalm alone should be sufficient for us to say I believe in the kingdom to come but it, it's not so but I, I want to look at a few more references turn with me to the book of Isaiah in the book of Isaiah it talks about this king too Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7 a passage that is most familiar to many people for a child will be born to us a son will be given to us it's that referencing of the son again and the government will rest upon his shoulders and this is the government that uh, is of Israel but it's it's we couldn't see will be the, the worldwide government and his name will be called Peleuetz El Kibor Afiat Sar Shalom that's the the JPS translation it, it transliterates the name and that obscures who he is to some degree the English would read wonderful counselor uh, the word here is indicating that this is a divine being because this is a, a divine title mighty God Al Kibor this is again a divine title father of eternity or eternal father in other words he has been the father from eternity he's the creator of time and Sar Shalom the Prince of Peace uh, only the last one in, in the references in the Bible could refer to either or but in the book of Isaiah this reference indicates a divine being so four titles of the divine one in other words he is the one who will be there verse 7 and there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace there will be no end no there will be a continual increase in other words all of the kingdoms all of the nations the very ends of the earth will have to submit to him like in Psalm 2 on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this this is not something that Israel does 
This is therefore not a Jewish fable, Jewish myth. This is a divine declaration by God that he will establish it because this will be done by the seal of the Lord of hosts, a reference that we'll see later on again in the book of Zechariah. God will establish this kingdom, the kingdom of his son, the kingdom who is both a person who is born and he is divine, he is the God-man. And he will sit on the throne of David. And so there is a Jewish connection. He is the Jewish king who will come. And that makes sense out of the context of uh, the whole book of Isaiah. Turn with me a few pages to 16, chapter 16, verse 5. Where he also talks about the throne. And he says, a throne even be established in love and kindness. And a judge will sit on it, the faithfulness in the tent of David. Moreover, he will seek justice and be prompt in righteousness. Suddenly he throws in this reference, but I want you to see that the two offices here are linked, the office of judge and the office of king. In ancient time, the king was the high judge or the, the, the high court judge, as we would call him. He, he would be the final authority. Uh, Moses had already established that principle uh, through his father-in-law when he had come. Uh, difficult cases were brought to the leader. Uh, smaller, less important cases were solved by the, the lesser judges. But this king will be the final judge in all things. When Messiah comes, initially he will judge those who may enter into the kingdom. And that's at the end of the times of the Gentiles, the tribulation period. That's when he will do that. Those who survive will be judged either to come in because they are believers or will be excluded because they are unbelievers. But he will play that role again at the very end of the, the Messianic Kingdom and we see that in Psalm 2 because it really is an end time Millennial Kingdom passage. Now I don't like the term Millennial Kingdom because the Millennial Kingdom really only indicates that it's a time period kingdom. But the time period is really not relevant. The kingdom isn't based on whether it's a thousand years. And so Revelation 20 is an, an incidental to me. The concept of the kingdom isn't based on Revelation 20. All that Revelation 20 adds is that it's a thousand years. But if the kingdom had been 500 years or 100 years or 10,000 years, would it have mattered? No, it wouldn't have. All it indicates is that the Messianic Kingdom will come to an end and that from then on we will move into the eternal state. But that's all it indicates. Let, let's, let's push on so that, that we can get some more references in because I think that's far more important. So let's look at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. And in Jeremiah 23, verses 5 to 6, we have a prophetic declaration. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the messianic person who is referenced here as the branch. Not only that, he is the righteous branch. And this is from the line of David, so he will be a Davidic king. And he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteously in the land. And so he will reign and he will judge. And so those two offices again are merged into the one, but it is the kingdom that is at hand, and he will reign as king and act wisely. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Now that's important because we think often as salvation as a spiritual aspect, but here Salvation is that physical aspect because Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. It's, it's a repetitive, like that parallelism, Hebrew parallelism. This is the same as that, but it's just reworded. So Israel and Judah are the same. Judah will be saved, Israel will be saved. 
and this is the name by which he will be called. Now this is one of those key passages that I want you to hear. Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. What is his name? Yahweh our righteousness. And this is the only occasion that you will find where the four letter name of God is directly applied to a person. Normally one letter, two letters, three letters are applied, but not four, except for here. And so here we see that, again, it's that divine person that is coming, who will be of David, who will reign as king, and he will act as judge. And because of that, he will save Israel. They will dwell securely. Now, to some degree, Paul applies that spiritually when all Israel will be saved, in that sense that they will be all secure, that they will receive salvation because of Messiah Yeshua's work. And that's why they will dwell securely. Jeremiah 33. In Jeremiah 33, verses 14. We have another prophetic declaration, 14 to 17. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good word which I have spoken concerning the house of Israel and the house of Judah. What is that word? They'll be secure in safety. The kingdom will be established. That language. <clears throat> and in those days, at that time, I will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth and he will execute justice and righteousness upon the earth. So clearly this is a reference back to those days. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. And it's that same referencing. You see, God wanted to make sure that absolutely nobody could say, ah, oh, we didn't know. Nobody except for Messiah himself, has that four-letter name of God, the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, or Jehovah, uh, as his personal name. But this person does. That's the key here. And David shall never have a lack of a man sitting on the throne over the house of Israel. Well, has that happened? The, the house of David collapsed. The house of David is fallen down. It is gone. But in the book of Amos, we will see in Amos 9 that he will re be, sorry, that it will be re-established. And that the throne at that point will live on forever. Then he talks about uh, the Levitical priests, uh, but that, that more to do with the, the priesthood and we, we will deal with that at a different time we won't deal with it now but we see that again it's the divine man it's not just somebody but it's the son of God God the son who will reign over the house of Israel and because of that he will make sure that they are safe and secure because he will be their judge and protector Turn with me to the book of Zechariah in chapter 14, the final chapter. And it says, And the Lord, that four letter name, will be king over all the earth. And the Lord will be the only one, and his name the only one. This is chanted on a regular basis within the synagogue. Uh, these are significant words. Who will be king? Well, the Lord is spirit, so who is it? It's his son, the divine man, who has that divine name within him. He will be king. Over oh, what? All the earth. And the Lord will be Echad, and Shemo Echad, his name will be one. The Lord will be one and his name be one. In other words, we will all honor the name of God at that point. And he's the only one. There is no 
shadow of turning in that sense within him. This is one of those persuasive arguments that God makes throughout Scripture. He is the only one and his kingdom will be the only one. There is no shadow of turning here. There is no argument. I, I, I love my uh, brothers who disagree with me. It's not an issue. But to miss out on the kingdom of God, it's, the, it's probably the best part is yet to come. And so it would be terrible. Well, what do we know about his reign? Because now that I've established who he is and who will reign and uh, the establishment of the kingdom and how he will establish it, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the character of his reign. Now, in Psalm 2, verse 9, we read that he will reign with a rod of iron. Uh, for those of you who know history and, and politics a little bit, uh, he won't be like the Iron Lady who was not for turning, but he is reigning with a rod of iron there is his absolute rule at that point it is not oh well uh, let, let me be indecisive about this no he will reign with righteousness and justice over all the earth and those who come against him they will feel his wrath that is the whole point of psalm 2 but let's go back to the psalms and let's pick another psalm because the kingdom is very persuasive uh, as, a, as an argument that God makes consistently. Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Selah. This is something that this inclusion of, of Selah, meaning a pause and reflect, it's a little thing that we should sing over and over again. Lift up your head so you gates. Well, gates can't lift up heads. They don't have heads. Who is sitting at the gate? The leaders. The community leaders be lifted up O ancient doors welcome him <clears throat> that the king of glory may come in he wants to be welcomed and so we have a choice do we welcome him and if we don't he will be the lord of hosts mighty in battle and he will conquer now he's he's not bent on conquering as in the book of revelation uh, as in the Antichrist, but he will reign over all the earth with a rod of iron, uh, particularly to those who do not want to flee into him. That's the point he's making. And here again, it's a clear declaration that the king who is coming is the king of glory. He's the king of holiness. Let, let's stick to the Psalms and let's go to Psalm 72. And it, it goes beyond me to deal with the entire psalm, but this is the psalm that Solomon wrote, and he says, Give the king your judgment, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. Now many people thought when Solomon wrote this, that this is about a generic son, and he'll just be one of the line of David. But I, I don't think so. May he judge your people in righteousness, if we line up all the kings that we're aware of, of both the Northern and the Southern Kingdom or the United Kingdom, there would be very few of them that would act righteously. This is the one who is coming. Let the mountains bring peace to your people and the hills in righteousness. May he vindicate the afflicted of your people, of the people. Save the children of the needy and crush the oppressors. Let them fear you while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations may he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish and the abundance of peace till the moon is no more. 
May he also rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This, when you read the context, clearly is indicating not just one of the sons of David, one of the sons of Solomon, just any of the king. No, this is the messianic king who we talked about, this the divine man. He is the one who will come and reign in righteousness and establish justice. And as long as the sun and moon is there, may his kingdom endure. In his days righteousness will flourish. Well, that's something that has not happened yet at all. Uh, I pray that we will get righteousness. That's what we desire. I don't want justice. I want mercy from the Lord but mercy in righteousness. Let's uh, look at the book of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is the Messianic prophet. He wrote uh, much about the Messianic kingdom. And in Isaiah 11, again, it's a famous passage. Verses 1 to 5. Then a shoot will come, or will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. Now it's interesting that he, the prophet now refers back to Jesse, David's father. When the house of David was fallen down, God will reuse it and reestablish it. But it's not because of the greatness of the house of David, no. It's a shoot that will come out from a dry stump. It's the root that will come because there is nothing left. It's like it was in the days of Jesse. And a branch from his root will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see. Nor make a decision by what he hears. But with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be the belt about his loins, and faithfulness the belt around his waist. It's indicating that again he will be of the Davidic line, but upon him is the fullness of the Spirit of God, the sevenfold Spirit. In Revelation, it talks about the seven spirits of God. That's the sevenfold spirits that is mentioned here. Now, all of us will receive a portion of his Spirit. God's Spirit dwells in us, but I don't have the fullness of wisdom or knowledge or understanding or wisdom. Like It's just not within me. Because God gives each of us a portion but in him there's the fullness of the Spirit, the sevenfold Spirit. And therefore he will not judge by what he sees, but by what is revealed to him by God himself through the Spirit. And he will therefore decide fairly for all of the people. The kingdom that is then described in verses 6 onwards is that the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. Well, that is Edenic language, uh, language from the Garden of Eden. In other words, with the kingdom comes that aspect that we will be like the God. Well, let me rephrase that. It will be like the Garden of Eden. And so as we describe the animal as Isaiah describes the animal kingdom here at peace, so too we will have peace. Not because we are peaceful, but because of the peace that is installed by the king. The nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra, and a weaned child will put his hand on a viper's den. Well, I have grandchildren, and I would not allow them to play with any snake ever because it's just scary and the chances that something goes wrong particularly with these kind of snakes is significant but there is a time coming when the kingdom is established when there will be absolute peace with the kingdom so it's not just in between them between 
the lion as we saw sorry the wolf and the lamb the leopard and the young goat the calf and the young lion but also between us and the animal kingdom between our children and the kingdom the animal kingdom they will not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the lord in other words all the earth will know the lord the language that was used of all israel will be saved because god will turn ungodliness away from jacob that language is now applied to the whole earth so at the beginning of the kingdom all people who go into the kingdom are saved and so they all have a knowledge of the lord just as the waters cover the sea and who is it then in that day the nations will sort resort to the root of jesse who will stand as a signal for the peoples and his resting place will be glorious this is about the person again it comes back to the king in that day the nations not just israel but all the nations will resort to the root of jesse in other words to the messianic king and he will be there for all people as a sign as a signal as a witness it doesn't have to be miraculous but it has that connotation that it will be a miraculous sign because he is the miraculous one that's the key uh, there's much more from Isaiah that we could pull out uh, but let's let's think about it who will be in the kingdom then for a minute is it a Jewish kingdom yes is it a Gentile kingdom yes because all of the kings of the earth and Psalm 72 refers to that will need to submit to them and Psalm 2 references that too but David will play a significant part now isn't it about the Messiah yes it's about the Messiah but underneath the Messiah there will be people who will do work for him and one of those people is King David turn with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and in verse 9 Now, the first time I preached on this passage, somebody objected rather loudly and said, This is about the Messiah. This is about my Yeshua. And I said to him, Do you believe that you'll be raised up in the kingdom? That you will receive resurrection? And he said, Yes. So why cannot... God sorry so why can God not raise up David and he, he he paused and I'm glad he did he reflected you see we often think of resurrection for us and for uh, church saints for believers but the believers extends from all the way from Adam forward at some stage all believers will come together and worship the Lord in the kingdom one of those people that will be raised up it says here Jeremiah 30 verse 9 but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up for them God clearly says that he's going to raise up King David there is no doubt about that is this the only passage where this is mentioned no Hosea chapter 3 verse 5 afterwards the son of the sons of Israel will return in other words after a period of exile they will seek the Lord their God and David their king and they will come trembling to the Lord their God and um, seek his goodness in the last days again this is a passage that clearly speaks that King David will be raised up uh, David had long died by the time of Jeremiah by the time of Hosea he, he had long gone but twice he is referenced as being to be raised up that, that is uncomfortable for some but it's really not that uncomfortable if you believe that you will be resurrected 
why can't you believe that God will raise up King David or Abraham and Jacob it is strange to me that we have people that say they're Bible believers yes God will raise up me us the body of Messiah but those those Old Testament saints that oh, 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 I don't know what to do with them but Daniel 12 talked about the resurrection for them turn with me to Ezekiel 34 where we see something clearly and then I will set over them one shepherd my servant David and he will feed them and he will feed them himself and he will be their shepherd and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince amongst them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Again, God is saying that he will raise up King David, but he is given a new title, that of prince. King David will only be a prince. You see, it depends on from whose perspective you're looking. If you're looking from our perspective, we look up and we see prince david as king but god is speaking and he's looking down and he's saying from messiah's perspective messiah will be king over all the earth psalm 72 psalm 2 clearly indicate that there will be local kings over a country over one of those countries the country of israel david will be king but from god's perspective or from messiah's perspective He'll be king over all the earth, and that'll be Messiah Yeshua. David will only have one country underneath him. That's the land of Israel, the house of Jacob. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, David is not a threat to Yeshua. Uh, the book of Hebrews that we studied uh, clearly indicates that Messiah Yeshua is greater than. Well, if he had included the kings, uh, Messiah Yeshua is greater than. He's the greater than son. There's no doubt about that because he is the divine man. David will reign over one country and so he'll be King David. But from Messiah's perspective, he will be only a local ruler and Nasi. And so he will just be a local ruler over one country and that's the country of Israel. He does the same thing in Ezekiel 37 in verses 24 to 25 where again it's that same language my servant david will be king over them and they'll have one shepherd so who is he well he's david king from our perspective but he will be only a servant the highest accolade you can get from god in in light of messiah and that's who he is but is he the only one who will have some authority or some rulership or something? No, not really. Uh, in the New Covenant, Yeshua even promises a, a special place for the 12 uh, disciples that he has, the 12 apostles. We see this in two uh, Gospels, in Matthew 19, verse 28, and Luke 22, verses 28 to 30. Matthew 19 verse 28 Yeshua said to them truly I say to you that you have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne you also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel they're sitting on thrones they're not kings but they have a judging role so they likely will be like King David a prince an authority and this is promised to the 12 apostles uh, obviously Judas will not be included in that he will be replaced and I, I don't know whether it'll be who that number 12 is I will leave that to the Lord but they will reign judging the 12 tribes of Israel some of the other princes in in terms of a general reference can be seen in Ezekiel 45 8 and then Isaiah 32 1 uh, where it gives uh, the kingdom language but there is an authority structure I suspect that people like Abraham 
Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Isaiah, all will have some leadership structure, but exactly how and who and where, we don't know. Uh, one of them we do know, uh, he's specifically mentioned by name, and that's in the book of Haggai, in chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, who mentioned Zerubbabel will become a signet ring, and so he will be some form of authority, a prince, a ruler, within this structure. Messiah Yeshua over all the earth. David will be just a local ruler, but from our perspective, king. And uh, underneath him, there will be Zerubbabel and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and other significant leaders, including Zerubbabel. Now, the, the twelve will therefore have some uh, judgment ship. And that's significant because they will be uh, an authority. They, then the, the body of Messiah is not excluded. But we too will have some authority within this. Uh, we will reign with Messiah. Now that can be seen, for instance, in Revelation 20, uh, verse 4. And uh, I think we will even reign over the nations. But exactly in what capacity, depending on what God has given us here and how we will fulfill our role within the kingdom today. The Messianic kingdom, we will all be given a role to play. But what that is, I don't know. So what you and I will do, I don't know. But can we all be king? Probably not. But what we can be, is servants of the Lord and so friends as we looked at this uh, there is there is much more that could be said um, but let me let me bring this to a close and I want to just focus just for a minute on why I believe that the kingdom will need to be established the messianic kingdom sometimes called the millennial kingdom as i said i don't like the term it's only found in revelation 20 and it's really an incidental is not based on revelation 20. the messianic kingdom is based on a ton of scripture but it's also based on the promises that god made the unconditional promises including the abrahamic covenant abraham was promised a land a seed and a blessing Abraham's promises in Genesis 12, 15, and 17, those three come together as the Abrahamic covenant, and he's promised the land, but he never owned it. So that needs to be fulfilled to him and his descendants, a seed. Well, in Galatians 3, Paul indicates that the seed is really about the Messiah, the Messianic King. And so it is that connection. Initially it is Isaac, and then from Isaac it's the nation of Israel, or Jacob, and then from Jacob the nation of Israel. But from him it is a singular seed. So the, the Messianic promise, sorry, the, the Abrahamic promise includes Messiah. And then there is a blessing, that he would be a blessing. Well, well what is that blessing to the world? That we can be like him by faith we receive what he received and that's the right standing with god there is the covenant that god made called the land covenant in deuteronomy at the end of deuteronomy 29 uh, 30 we see 28 20, uh, 28 29 we see that god makes a, a land covenant uh, some people call it the palestinian covenant that's a um, sad name i think but the land was never fulfilled the promise of the the land was not fulfilled but it it sits underneath the abrahamic covenant there is the davidic covenant that god made with king david king david was a particular seed that would come a particular offspring and that ultimately will find its fulfillment in the messiah the kingdom of David will be handed over to him. The throne of David will be handed over to him. The people of King David will be handed over to him. All of it is referring future. So this, the seed aspect of the Abrahamic covenant traces it line 
through the Davidic covenant. But the other unconditional covenant is the new covenant, uh, Jeremiah 31, but also within the book of Ezekiel uh, and in Isaiah we see that. And the promise of the new covenant is the blessing of a new heart, the forgiveness of sin, the filling in of the spirit. All of that talks about salvation in a spiritual sense. Well, when will all Israel be saved? In the kingdom, in the messianic kingdom. So the Abrahamic covenant with underneath it the land, the Davidic and the new covenant all finds its fulfillment in the messianic kingdom. Why? Because it is then that Abraham will be the prince and he will reign in the land somehow, somewhere. Uh, underneath King David, I don't know exactly how or next to. The land, it will be occupied by him and his descendants through the covenantal promises. And the new covenant will bring that spiritual salvation finally in. Friends, we could trace the, the covenants and come to the same point that God will bring it all to fulfillment in the messianic kingdom. The kingdom is not a minor theme. Messiah the King is an essential. I hope that you can see that with me and that you'll ponder this. And as you pray together with us and you pray those words from uh, that Yeshua told us to pray, um, remembering that, that God is in heaven and we want to sanctify Him, His name, because the names that the Messiah has given are significant. We're praying for his kingdom to come here and that we may enter into that. That the kingdom of the Messiah will be established on earth and that his will will be done today in our life, but then in the life of all who are alive, just as it is in heaven. So will you pray that the kingdom will come and that many of us will enter the kingdom because of the righteousness of Messiah, our high priest, who's made intercession for us, for Messiah, the suffering servant, who's made that intercession for us and who shed his blood? In light of that, we need to submit to the king so that he doesn't scorn us and speak to us in his anger but come to us in his love. Amen. Well, until next time, Shabbat Shalom, and may we think of Messiah the King, our King, but also the coming King. Particularly as we come towards the High Holy Days, may we reflect upon his kingship and really think about it. Amen. We will praise the King of Israel, Yeshua, who came to die for our sins and rose from the dead for our forgiveness, who is Redeemer of all of Israel and all of the world. And we will praise your name. <laughs> Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Melech Israel, Leola Baer. Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Melech Israel, Leola Baer. Siman, Siman, Tov. Oh, yo, 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 Mazel, Mazel, Tov. We will lift you up and praise your name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name, King of all Israel. 
ישוע מלך, מלך ישראל, ישוע מלך, מלך ישראל, ישוע מלך, מלך ישראל, מלך ישראל, לעולם ועד. ישוע מלך, מלך ישראל, ישוע מלך, מלך ישראל, ישוע The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his countenance shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ our Lord. May his love dwell richly in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, it, uh, it's always a pleasure to see so many clicks. Um, uh, it is important for us to know who you are. Uh, it would be really nice if you would just uh, flick us a note during uh, the production uh, on the chat screen or afterwards. I uh, well, needless to say, this does take a considerable amount of time, particularly to Paul uh, and uh, in the live stuff to Sui uh, and also Justin. Please could you, um, in your notes, uh, say a specific thank you to Justin and Sui, because without them, uh, we would not have had the success that we've had. Also, thank you very much to our music team, um, our uh, productions are getting better and better. We wish you a phenomenal week and a healthy one and looking forward to see you face to face next Friday. Good evening.